My name is Kate Richardson, and I am a registered dietitian nutritionist. I work at a private practice where I help individuals craft personalized plans to help them get to their ultimate health goals using nutrition. So being a registered dietitian nutritionist means I'm not only licensed to help people with medical conditions like high blood sugars, diabetes, hypertension, kidney disease, but I also have my degree in nutrition. So when I say food is my life and it has been my life, I really mean it. I might have somebody come in the office who is really focusing on improving their relationship with food. They have dieted their whole life. They feel like they're either on a diet or off a diet. They don't really know how to eat without following a strict program, but they can't follow a strict program for long and they think something's wrong with them. And I help them reframe how they see food and start eating for their life and working with their body instead of always fighting it. The most exciting part of doing the show with the team app for me is to finally give people an idea of what working with a dietitian actually looks like. Hi, my name is Rachel. I am so excited to be here today. I'm going to be starting my health and wellness journey with nutrition awareness. Kate is amazing and I am excited to be going on this journey. Well, hey Rachel, hey. welcome. Welcome to the Nutrition Awareness Office. I'm so glad you're here. Yeah. You know, one of the first questions I like to ask everybody that comes in is, what made you decide, okay, this is it. I am going to work with a dietitian. I'm going to talk to somebody about my nutrition for real. What was the push that you needed to come in today? Okay, so I have tried every fad under the sun. Like okay. I've done keto, I've done Atkins when that was a thing, um, South Beach, Paleo, you name it, I tried it. So I found what worked for me, which at the time was macros, and then okay. I had a child. And as you know, I'm sure, your body completely changes. So now it's I'm just at a point where it, it's a priority again. Um, you don't mind me asking, when was the macro tracking? When was, when were you really on that? <sighs> okay, so I would say hmm. that was t probably 2015, okay. 16, 17, because I stopped okay. when I got pregnant. Yeah. Okay. So you, okay, when did you, when did you get pregnant? 2017. Gotcha, okay, 2017. And since 2017, since having the baby, and yeah. since and changing your life completely. Yeah. <laughs> So <laughs> when was that? Since then, have you tried anything? Have you gone back to macro counting? Have you experimented with different diets since then? No, okay. I would, um, you know, I know healthy versus not healthy. You know, like okay. I know the basics. So I would go toward more of like the, all right, we're going to eat clean or we're going to do no sugar. Mm. But it was all for small chunks of time. It'd be okay for six weeks, for a month or whatever. And then it's so easy that you just fall off the bandwagon and you're back in your mm. cycle of eating unhealthy um, eating out a lot, which COVID's brought a lot of things, but that's been <laughs> one blessing to me. I'm, I'm not eating out all the time anymore. So yeah, just social gatherings, uh, just being more disciplined is mm. something that I'm ready for. All these new health goals that you're thinking about, mm -hmm. if you don't mind me asking, on a, let's say on a scale from one to 10, mm -hmm. 10 being rip your hair out, you're so stressed, want to jump off a bridge, <laughs> one being chills a cucumber on an average day, okay. where's your stress? Okay, so I will say I'm not someone who gets stressed easily. I can see that. So. Yeah, you don't seem like a super stressed out person. I'm not. I'm not. So I do think that's to my advantage, but um, there will get times where I'm overwhelmed, and that's really why I looked into time blocking and why mm. I started doing it, because on top of that, I launched um, a business of my own a couple months ago, so I'm someone that will continue to add to my plate and not realizing everything that's going on it at once. And that's yeah. why prioritizing health, I feel like, was always pushed to the side. So mm -hmm. there was always something new. I was always adding something different. So uh, I guess on a scale from 1 to 10, on an average day, I would say a 6-ish. Mm. <laughs> to bring it back to nutrition is... Where would your health and nutrition be grouped? Would it be in your professional tasks? Is it something that you take very seriously as if it were a job? Or do you see nutrition and health being more in your personal life, something that is just a bit more flowy? Okay, so when I'm doing nutrition right, <laughs> it is definitely type A, like I have to be type A with it. So I have to meal plan, I have to know what mm -hmm. I'm eating, I have to make a list, I have to meal prep, everything's ready on Sunday for the week. Mm -hmm. uh, 
you know, everything's bagged, even if it's like a prepackaged hummus and a prepackaged carrots, like they're in a bag together. So mm -hmm. it does, for me to be successful with it mm -hmm. and for me to stick to it, it has to be type A. Part, part of it, I think part of what made macros initially so successful for me was that I was doing it with someone. Mm -hmm. And we, so we were able to hold someone accountable. I was able to have that communication with them. If I was having an off day, you know, it was someone that I could initially go to. Sure. Um, it was something I enjoyed. And it like for me at that point in my life, my health was a priority. I was like, I'm getting in mm. shape. I'm gonna be in the best shape of my life. Um, so, you know, I was strict, strict. Like I would not go off my macros. Like I would not veer off of whatever it was that I was going to. Um, so that is like the type A in me that was kind of coming out. The others, um, I just think I was younger when I tried them. I wasn't as serious about it. Um, it was more of like a trend, like, oh, let's try this and see if it works. Not like I believe in this, like I'm going to do it. So I think my belief in macros, seeing what it did, knowing someone was there along the way, knowing that if it wasn't working, I could go to someone and they could adjust. So I think that helped me a lot with it too. Mm -hmm. Let's say you had a, a quote unquote, we'll call it a moment of weakness, okay. where you ate off the plan. Okay. How would you react? <laughs> the whole day is shut. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm eating off plan for the rest of the day. Yeah. And then it's like my cheat day. I'm going to start tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. That's 100% how I would react. Yeah. yeah. And I'll tell you what, that's something. And the reason I ask that is because I have that in common with you. Okay. Where you like structure and it's so nice to see things like, okay, Here's what I'm doing. Here's what I'm eating. Here's the plan. Sure. Then life throws you a curveball, especially with a kid at home. Sheesh. Stuff happens. Mm -hmm. Life happens. Moments of weakness. And I put those in quotes. Moments yeah. of weakness happen. <laughs> sure. But perfectionists and go-getters and overachievers, this is our downfall. And you as somebody who's starting your own business, you have a high-level job, you're a mom, you're prioritizing health, you're an overachiever. <laughs> this is going to be the thing that serves you in so many areas, but in other areas, knocks you on your feet, mm -hmm. knocks you off your feet. And that's, okay, if one little thing just goes wrong, it's screw it, why even try? Why even bother? Why even take yeah. anything that I learned from the dietitian seriously? Because I ate five grams more fat than I needed to, or I let myself have a piece of chocolate, or I didn't completely follow my caloric restriction, mm -hmm. whatever it is. And that's when that excuse starts to happen. Sure. <laughs> and sometimes, sometimes, and you can kind of tell me what your thoughts are on this, is it's like a subconscious excuse to do something that's more comfortable or that we enjoy. Oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. So starting to call ourselves out on excuses can really help bring some awareness to, okay, sure. just because things aren't perfect or just because you eat something that you don't consider good or clean or on point is not a reason to give up. I've noticed a few times you refer to things as eating healthy or not eating healthy. Mm -hmm. It's either healthy or it's not. Right. What is healthy to you? Um, healthy to me is just eating clean. Okay. So mm -hmm. when I am clean eating, like lifestyle wise, um, I typically will do a protein that is a fish or a chicken. I do a lot of chicken, um, the carbs. So typically, it, you know, it'll be a sweet potato, um, a brown rice. Eh, if we do a pasta, you know, maybe from time to time, it would be a whole grain. Um, and then veggies. Of course. Mm -hmm. Love it. Okay, so uh, I love your definition because it's so in line with what I hear people say clean eating is, right? Mm -hmm. Clean eating and healthy, they're really vague terms. And so that's why I ask you those questions, just yeah. to get a good idea of what you see. One thing I noticed is that's a pretty limited list. It sounds oh, like yes. lean protein, <laughs> a handful of certain complex carbs, veggies, all really healthy things, but that's limited. Right. Do you feel restricted on that diet or do you feel pretty satisfying when you eat clean? Uh, I, if I'm eating clean and I'm in the mental frame that like I'm eating clean, I don't. But if, mm -hmm. like I said, if I'm mentally not ready, if I'm like, oh, you know, if I step on a scale and I'm like, okay, this is it. Like, you know, if it's like a spur of the moment, like we're doing this or, you know, we're only eating these things, then yeah, I definitely find it limiting. Can I make an observation though? Is sure. Yeah. A few times earlier you were talking to me, you're like, I don't snack. Snacking's not good. Snacking's not healthy. But I noticed that you snack when you get home on things that you know that really just don't fit a healthy diet. Mm -hmm. You know, refined carbohydrates, things that don't fuel you, that have no nutrient value. 
Yeah. When we've been on so many diets in the past, when we have followed things from keto to Atkins to macros to clean eating to all the things, we start to keep this little running list in our head of rules. Mm -hmm. you know, uh, white potato's bad. Um, carbs bad. Um, these certain foods are good. These ones are bad. And sometimes those rules just pile up. And as soon as we see a meal, even if it's nutritious, even if it's really satisfying, even if it makes it easy for us to eat a complete meal that's got all mm -hmm. of the different food groups, right? Yeah. <laughs> we can always just find something about it that is an excuse not to eat it. Okay. And the reason I bring that up is to go back to that point about allowing more foods into your diet. And this is important for a multitude of reasons. Mm -hmm. One, it's going to make this more sustainable. So the reason I asked you is how do you see yourself eating in six years? Yeah, having a plan and structure is awesome. Mm -hmm. But if that structure is so constricted to a handful of foods because other things have told us that other foods aren't so healthy, you're not going to make it to six years, let alone six weeks. That's right. just facts, especially when you have more to focus on than just yourself. One of the things that I find to be the most successful with clients is when they have an abundant mindset about food. And this is where we get to balance structure with flexibility. And the key mindset is, okay, thinking about all of the foods you should and can eat in abundance because it makes it more fun, it makes it more exciting, it gives yes. you more variety so you don't get burnt out on the same things. Mm -hmm. But it's hard, it's mentally hard because you have to go back with your eraser and your brain and start erasing some of those food rules. I don't think giving you a strict macro gram is gonna be beneficial right now. I feel like these are the few things that are really gonna build a strong foundation. One is a system to help you plan for healthy meals. Mm -hmm. The second thing is still gonna bounce off a lot of that macronutrient information that you've thrived off of in the past. Mm -hmm. So it is important to get a variety of macronutrients every time you eat. And you probably saw that when you were following that macro diet meal. Now this being said, there's always gonna be room for times where you just eat what you need, okay? mm -hmm. what you want. And that goes back to that perfectionist thing, right? Because if you do have a, a dinner out on Saturday, that doesn't really mimic what we talk about today. It's business as usual on Sunday. You pick right back up, you get right back on the horse, wagon track, whatever kind of expression that you want to use that people right. are out there, but you just get right back on it. And that's where the beautiful part of having some flexibility comes in because you have some structure, you know, okay, I need to be eating balanced meals. I need to have a balanced snack in between lunch and dinner. I need to be eating a good source of protein and not ne neglecting carbs, but choosing the best carbs. Mm -hmm. I need to not be going long stretches without eating. So you get that structure, right? but there's that flexibility. It's probably one of the more cliche pieces of nutrition advice that I do find to be really helpful for overachievers, all or nothing mindsets, is to think about the 80-20 rule. And I used to scoff at it, I used to be like, oh, so cliche, but it's cliche <laughs> for a reason. If you zoom out of your diet for a week, and you just look at your diet as a week, not a day, but a week. Mm -hmm. And you think, okay, 80% of the time, I'm eating balanced, consistent meals. I'm choosing nutritious foods off the lists. I'm eating a balance of protein and carbs and lots of veggies. And then 20% of the time, you go out to eat and you order what you want because it feels good. Mm -hmm. But you got to think about it from a week scale because it's easy to get so hung up on the day-to-day. -day, mm -hmm. And then that 20% turns in 30%, turns in 40%, and we're not really making progress. But when we're all or nothing and we're only hitting that 100% mark, mm -hmm. as soon as we break, then it's back to zero. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. So coming up with some things, and I've got lists I'll send you of different ideas for different snacks, but all of this has to be stuff that you enjoy. Yeah. It's got to have some variety, and the beautiful thing is allowing yourself to have a more variety of foods that just isn't you know, chicken and rice and potatoes. Right is going to give you an opportunity to eat things you really like mm -hmm. and kind of solve some of these problems because I have a hunch that you're taking in way more refined carbohydrates and calories that you need when you get home from work and you're hangry mm -hmm. and you're hungry and this is going to be a, a good game changer for you. Okay. It seems simple. I'm excited. I know. Yes. So just to kind of to wrap up here and make sure you feel really good about what we're doing. Okay. Is big goals eating out once per week. Mm -hmm. Being more consistent on weekends and giving some structure in your week thinking of this isn't a diet, it's okay, I'm eating balanced meals with carbs, protein, and fat, and I'm strategically planning a snack, or sometimes I call it a mini meal, because snacking kind of infers like snacking on crackers yeah. and goldfish and all that junk. Yeah. This is something I really like people to do, not as a reason to make them feel uh, like they have to track every calorie that they're eating, but I like when people keep a documentation of not only how they're eating, but 
the effects, right? Okay. That's okay. on a fitness tracker, but you can also just keep it in your phone. We call it a food and mood journal. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for you too. Yes. Okay. So yeah. we'll probably do our first follow up in two to four weeks. Okay. But you can always reach out to me anytime between now and our next follow up. That's part of the thing. I'm a resource for you whenever you need support, whenever you need help. Email me. Some people text me pictures of what they're eating. Whatever works for you. All right. Sounds good. Right, These are for me. These are for you. Yeah.